You're the defending champion here in Liverpool. Just talk to me about this one. And would you say that this would be the biggest win of your career in terms of a name on your record? I know you've had so many massive nights in your career, but where would a win over Michaela rank? Yeah, I definitely think it would be the best name on my record. Um, and she's probably uh, top three fighters that I've fought. Um, yeah, um, it's a huge night for not mis- not just myself, but for the city, for the young talent that we've got coming through in Steve Clark and, and little Mikey Talon as well. Um, but also the coaches in Stephen Smith, who's someone I, I think Mawson has supported as well when he was uh, a professional. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's huge. It doesn't get any bigger than this. And to headline in my own city is an honour and a privilege. Because we've talked about this for the past couple of years now, but you have firmly set yourself as a, a massive headline attraction for a boxer, specifically in the North West, Liverpool and Manchester. But do you still feel like you have that underdog mentality heading into a, a fight like this? Because obviously Mikhail's a massive name in America, you're a massive name in England. What, what do you make of that in terms of your mentality or do you feel like you're firmly the favourite heading into this one? Um, I, I believe I'm the favourite. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the bookies or, or other people think, but I believe I'm the favourite. I think um, that was the whole reason that I, I, I wanted Amaya, to be honest, because she does bring a lot to the table. And I think, you know, maybe in, in previous fights I haven't got um, what kind of the credit that I deserved for beating some of the fighters because, you know, they are, they're not household names like she is. Um, but, you know, for me, uh, when I leave boxing, I, w- I want to be able to say I was one of the best, one of the best in our era, and to do that, I've got to be following the likes of Chantal um, Cameron and Katie Taylor and beating people in that top ten pound for pound list, and they've done that. So, you know, May is in that top ten pound for pound list, and I believe she's a fighter that I can beat, and and I think that more than anything means the most and solidifies what what for for me as legacy. You know, when you're beating people of the era who was you know highly rated. And obviously, Alicia Baumgardner, she set the blueprint to beat Mayer. Obviously, it was a really close fight. Some people had it going one way or another. But that's got to be a fight that you're looking at as well, to see chinks in the armour. And we obviously can't get too deep into what those chinks are from what you can see. But yeah, do you see those? Do you see weaknesses in her game that you're looking to exploit? Yeah, 100%. I think I just... Uh, her overall game, I, I rate everything that she does. She's well schooled. She's got a good boxing IQ, good engine, good footwork. Can fight when she wants to. But I just think everything in every department that she does, that I do better. Um, I don't. I, I, I'm one of them people who actually fought Michaela won against Barm Gardner. Um, but I can see why the decision may have gone, you know, a few close rounds. Baum got to land on the biggest shots, and you know they, they could hit Michaela, and we we seen that. You know, she went from fighting to boxing again very quickly and I just think in, in every department that she's got whether she wants to stand there and fight or whether she wants to you know stand off and box that I'm just better. And you know stranger to getting your opponent out of there in the distance inside the distance and you know stranger to a toe-to-toe war either so stylistically how do you think you guys gel with each other and do you see it going the distance or do you see yourself capable of getting her out of there before the final bell rings? I've prepared myself for the distance for 10 hard rounds um, but if the opportunity comes to, to, to finish that early of course I'm going to take it um, I've worked on myself on getting a better start you know it's cost me um, possibly potential fights uh, previously so getting a good start for me is important um, but I do think our, our styles will gel well because if she wants to box I can box and if she wants to fight I, I can fight so yeah I think that that's, that puts on for a, great, for a great show between us I can feel the passion in your voice now it's definitely changed now it's fight week because you're a very very nice person just like Anthony Crawler one of our former ambassadors and still an ambassador was but you see the sort of switch happen in fight week and Mikhail is not a trash talker either unless someone's bringing it to her um, what was it like sitting face to face I know we were speaking about that just off camera a minute ago but are those sort of situations Are they where you can look your opponent directly in the eye and try and gauge them body language wise or do you just find that whole thing like incredibly awkward because that's not who you are as a person is it? No, no, it is, um, you know, we are a business, we're an entertainment business and there's certain contractual obligations that we have to abide by and and 
they're just one of them media is just one of them um, and we, you know like I say we are an intimidate we're trying to sell ourselves and ourselves we are the product um, so it is a bit it is a bit not what I'm used to I prefer to just let my hands do the talking in the ring and, and she's pretty much the same which is why there is no trash talk and we don't need to talk up how good we are we've both been we're both well, I am still current world champion she has been a world champion she knows she's good I know I'm good so we don't need to we don't need to thrash it out we just we just need to let our hands do the talking and you mentioned you know the, these are the sorts of legacy fights that are going to be pivotal in your lasting effect on the sport in in boxing and you mentioned that you want to test yourself against the top 10 current pound for pound so you look at we talk about that quite a lot the katie taylor fight obviously taylor cameron three looks like it's going to happen i'd love to see you fight the winner of that i'd love to see you in there with serrano if the shields fight could happen at some point i'd still love to see that are those are those the fights where you think right maybe those three or four i need them before the end of my career or are those just bonuses at this point every fight's a bonus after namas um, but yeah, there's this, I just just reeled off. There's still some huge names and some huge fights for yeah. me. And again, every single name that you just mentioned in the top ten pound for pound list. And you know, I believe I am you know more than top ten, more than top five. But I've got to go out and prove it. And I've got to keep them doors open for them from them other big fights. And the only way I can do that is by beating Michaela Meyer on Saturday. So even though I know they could be there and they are opportunities and they are huge. I've got to do what's in front of me, which is Maya. Um, but yeah, you know, to be involved in a, in a Katie conversation would be huge. Chantelle Cameron's another huge fight. Clarissa probably thinks off the table now. Um, but yeah, you know, there are other huge fights that I'd love to, to, to have before before I finally do hang up the gloves. Because that's like the last thing on your radar, on your bucket list really, is a headline stadium fight. And all those fights that I mentioned there, they're sellouts in a stadium so yeah surely that's the last thing that you want to accomplish now before you head off into the sunset yeah for, of course we're, we're all um it's all about like legacy and, and and doing fights that fulfill my purpose not not so much everybody else but you've got to like i keep saying we are a business you know we are people fan, fans need to buy into it and it's hard to get fighters that um and fights that you know, satisfy the network, satisfy the promoter, satisfy the fans and satisfy the fighters, but the, the fighters that you just named do that and Michaela does that, which is why I chose her. And obviously you have a lot of time to think, you know, reflect and look forward in fight week when you're alone with your own thoughts and stuff, but you must think back to times when you've been on the undercard at the MS Bank Arena, or we'll still call it the Echo, it will always be the Echo, but yeah, you was on the undercard and now you're a glorified headliner, always going to be a headliner from, from this moment on. H how does that feel? Because you, you, I've seen you in the crowd, in the stands there as well, watching your friends, watching Liam Smith, Callum Smith. F for you to have those moments now yourself, when that seemed like it was quite far away at certain points of your career, what, what's that like? Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's the realisation that it comes true is... is is massive it's um i definitely have come a long way um even you know being an amateur and being able to fight in the echo was huge and to be on the un uh, um i was fighting bergolt on liam smith on the card of chief support that was huge i thought they're the moments i thought this is as big as it gets and then and then i get hit with with today well with saturday where you know it's going to be me headlining in my own world title fight in the defense of my title in front of my home crowd and it just doesn't you know, these are the things that we we're in this sport for to, to create their memories and to create something that's lasting. And not only have I've I I done that for myself, but I'm knocking the door down for girls that are coming after me. Um, you know, we mentioned those stadium fights before. You're probably in a position, you're very likely in a position now where you can put your foot down and say, actually, you know, with those potentially Katie Taylor fight, whether it's Taylor or Chantal Cameron, you could say, look, I want this to happen over here at Anfield. I want it to happen in the stadium in Liverpool. That would be the ideal situation, even though those Dublin crowds are incredible. But Liverpool crowds, the Scousers are absolutely nuts. And a stadium full of Scousers and potentially Irish or whoever you fight, uh, whether it's an American fighter as well, that would be incredible, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think um, there's two things 
we've, we've got we've got great athletes in Liverpool from track and field, um, but football and boxing is probably our forte. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the you know the masses that follow is is huge, and I think you know there's a lot of uh, Scouse families with a lot of um, Irish um, blood in them. Yes. So I think you know, and Anfield and Anfield sounds great uh, uh, to 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 go out on a Anfield or to you know have that in your locker as as being one of the fights that you did in Anfield as a Liverpool supporter um, is huge. So yeah, hopefully we can get fights like that, and this year is the year that that can be done. So yeah, yeah. But as I say, I've got to win on Saturday to make sure that all them doors and all them opportunities stay open. Amazing. Well, I know the press conference is going to start soon and you've got a very busy day of media ahead of fight night. So, yeah, just soak it all in, enjoy it, and I'm really excited for Saturday night. Thanks so much for your time. Cheers, thanks.